Um, another term that we have to figure out is wavelength. Um, does anybody know what a wavelength is? Does anybody have a general idea of what it even maybe even Im implies? It's the uh, distance between the first peak and then the second peak. Absolutely. It's exactly what it is. We'll go back to, uh, to here. A wavelength is how long it is from this point to this point, or the peak point to the peak point, or the trough point to the trough point. That, that's, that's a distance. Every frequency has a different distance. Just as in, I'm going to grab this wrong one every day until I mark it, aren't I? The lower the frequency, the, the longer the wavelength. What's that? Uh, not necessarily. Um, it's, it's called, the wavelength is what it's called from this point to this point when it does one complete cycle. And the lower the frequency, the longer the wavelength. As you can see, they're longer here and they'll get longer yet again. And then when you go higher, they get closer together. So wavelength by definition, is the distance from any one point to the next point. Now in a sine wave, it's easy to find where the, where the wave peaks and troughs. But with real sound, it's not as easy to figure out. Let's get this so we can see it here. Two, 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 two. You can see uh, one, two, if you just hum, you can see how complex the wave signal really is. Uh, let's see if we could figure out where we can actually see it. Uh, okay, so now we have a couple wavelengths of just that tone that I'm very sorrowfully <laughs> putting out. Uh, and you can see where it has, it repeats itself. Anytime the signal stays constant, there's a repeating and then you can actually calculate the wavelength. So we'll have to understand wavelength as well, uh, which is pretty simple. It's from one peak to the next peak before we can move on. Uh, so does anybody have any more questions about wavelength? Doesn't have to be from the, um, the peak of the, the length, right? It can be from, the, or it's the same as any other point on one. It's the same as any other point. Where you start, to figure out the, the measurement of it is irrelevant. You know, you can start either on the, the rising side or whatever. Basically, you want to figure out where it repeats itself. Uh, and then measure from where it starts to where it starts repeating itself and then take one thing. It's, it's irrelevant what that ag actually is, where you start and where you finish it from, but to understand what it is that you, that it's, the actual signal has a length to it. So, again, you can start at any point, but uh, <coughs> one full cycle or wavelength um, is the completion from peak to trough. And we also need to understand that there's a half cycle because acoustically, you can't have compression without decompression somewhere. So you cannot have a signal that contains only a peak and then no trough. Just like waves in a water, the water has to come from somewhere. You can't have a tidal wave without a huge depression in the water somewhere, or it might be a gradual depression somewhere. Um, the same thing with acoustics. The audio signal in order to have compression, you have to, those mo air molecules literally have to come from somewhere. And we also need to understand that a half cycle is either the plus positive section or the negative section is, rep is a half cycle. Half cycles become important later on, 
but uh, obviously a full one is, is a complete wave with the peak in the trough and a half one is either just the peak or just the trough. Now, this is a nice little chart I made of how physically long the wavelengths are of different frequencies. And what we have, we have 50 hertz. It has a wavelength, an actual wavelength. Let's say we start here at the trough and we go to the next trough of approximately 16 feet. And let's do one where we can actually see it as well. Let's go to 200 hertz on the uh, little sine wave generator here. So this is 200 hertz. The same frequency that I represented here. And here it looks like 200 hertz has approximately a wavelength of five feet. In other words, in the room here, the sound coming out of the speaker, 200 hertz, it has a peak and a trough all within five feet. In other words, there's a compressed section of air and a decompressed section of air within that five feet. Just like here, there's a, we're not really sure where the decompressed or compressed section is. You can actually take a test microphone sometimes and physically see it. Um, but uh, you need to understand that every time you get higher, you get closer together. So now let's let's move up to 800 hertz. You can see that uh, if you were paying attention before, I wasn't even myself, that they're twice as close together. And now we have 800 hertz where you can't quite see because it's so small, but it's approximately two feet or a little under two feet for one wave to develop. You can actually fit one, two, three, four full waves within the five foot span. And every time these are doubled on purpose, 50 hertz, 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 400 hertz. And if you notice, because they're doubled, the distance here, is approximately 16 feet from, in this case, trough to trough. The distance here is approximately eight, where am I at? Oh, that's 16, 100, I'm lost here. Oh, this is 20, it's about 21 feet. So here it's about 11 feet, the distance from here. And then it gets smaller, five and a half or six feet. So every time we double the frequency, the wavelength gets cut in half. And the same holds true, you go all the way up the spectrum to the higher frequencies. This is 8,000 hertz. Um, it's pretty high up there. Um, the human ear can hear from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. But, uh, so the most important factor is our understanding that every time we double the frequency, we cut in half the wavelength.